I would like uh, to say something about very simple observation relating uh, 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 covariant quantum gravity. Uh, and the observation is very simple, but uh, it leads to quite non-trivial uh, results. Uh, and uh, this work is uh, uh, this work emerges uh, from uh, our our common w uh, work with um, Michał Heller. So, uh, first thing is uh, the Feynman approach to quantum gravity. Feynman uh, introduced. Uh, his technique of uh, calculating uh, some expression from, uh, in quantum field theory, uh, uh, which uh, generally is formulated on flat Minkowski space time. And uh, uh, using Feynman diagrams, you can, uh, you can calculate uh, many cross sections, many physical uh, measured uh, quantities. And the uh, uh, main player are uh, Feynman diagrams. Uh, However, the approach of quantum field theory doesn't cover uh, uh, the presence of gravity. Uh, from general relativity, we know that uh, when we want to introduce gravity to the picture, we should uh, consider this on uh, curved uh, uh, Minkowski, on, on curved Lorentzian manifold. And uh, Feynman, how, however, Feynman uh, tried to build uh, quantum theory of gravity based also on Feynman diagrams, which means he formulated uh, uh, interacting uh, gravitationally, quantum gravitationally uh, particles on flat Minkowski space-time. And uh, the interaction uh, are carried by uh, spin to particle, which is graviton. And uh, in fact, uh, quantum field, uh, which undergoes uh, quantization, uh, in this approach of uh, Feynman uh, was a linearization of, uh, of the metric field. And the main feature of such approach by Feynman uh, was that, that uh, we forget about classical gravity and uh, we just deal with uh, Feynman diagrams as, as a first uh, data of the theory. Uh, it is perturbative theory because it uh, deals with uh, diagrams. Uh, and uh, again, it is worth uh, repeating that the uh, background of the theory is flat Minkowski space time, uh, which means that no classical gravity, which, is a, which should be equivalent to curvature, is present there. And, uh, however, classical general relativity is restored uh, from Feynman diagrams. Uh, already at the three level. It is a known result of Feynman from 1962. Uh, so, general setup uh, is the following. Uh, we have flat Minkowski sp space-time, four-dimensional, and uh, we have various uh, fields representing uh, quantum particles, as, uh, uh, and the gravitational field is uh, defined as a linearization of the metric field, and we quantize that linearization uh, and the gravitational interactions are described by Feynman diagrams on the flat Minkowski space-time and Feynman diagrams are, are built uh, according, uh, assigning, according the rule which assigns uh, to vertices some ex expressions uh, and to propagator some expressions. And uh, problems of such uh, perturbative quantum gravity by Feynman is that it is, uh, we, we can say, it is completely wrong as a physical theory because uh, such a theory cannot be renormalized in, in terms of uh, quantum field theory. It means that the expression appearing here are divergent and cannot be made uh, finite, uh, which we could uh, uh, compare to uh, what we measure in experiments. Uh, for example, a standard model of particles uh, using the same technology for Feynman diagrams uh, predicts very well uh, uh, determined quantities which we measure. Ev everything is finite uh, after renormalization procedure. Uh, at the present time, we don't have uh, finite, renormalized, perturbative or non perturbative theory of quantum gravity formulated in dimension 4. 
Uh, but it is worth mentioning that uh, pure quantum gravity, which means uh, where only a gravitational field is present uh, in one loop, one loop is a jargon of uh, quantum field theory, which means that from Feynman diagrams, we, we, left only, uh, we leave only uh, diagrams which have maximally one loop. Uh, so uh, when we do this, uh, in this case, uh, we obtain finite uh, quantum gravity. And, uh, when we add uh, sources, which means the, uh, our theory is not uh, uh, pure quantum gravity any longer, we get renormalized uh, in one loop uh, quantum gravity. So pure quantum gravity is finite already in one loop uh, but, uh, and is renormalizable uh, as a uh, quantum gravity with sources, with matter sources, which is not pure. Uh, it is uh, there are essentially results of uh, Weltman and Tehoft. Uh, but uh, when we consider any order of perturbative uh, series, we can say that the perturbative covariant quantum gravity on four-dimensional Minkowski space-time fails. Uh, what we are trying to do here is to uh, take, instead of uh, flat Minkowski space-time, we take a categorical counterpart, counterpart of that uh, uh, space-time and then uh, try to implement a Feynman program on such uh, categorical space-time. Sorry? Why, why do you interpret this Feynman idea as some theory of gravity? We have some particle of spin too, but is there something more which makes it the... Why do I interpret this as a Feynman theory? Feynman because, uh, because Feynman did it. Yeah, but so I'm asking why did he interpret this as a theory of gravity? There is a particle of spin too, that's fine, but... Okay, the, uh, that I, I men mentioned that already, that uh, in uh, f first order, in, in three order, from Feynman diagrams, you get general re relativity. It is also a result of Feynman from 62. So you mean Einstein? Linear Einstein? Yes, from linearization, from, from this uh, uh, sort of quantization of linearization of, uh, starting from Feynman diagrams, at three level, you get uh, uh, general relativity. I will show here uh, how to get uh, Newton uh, law from, uh, from three level of diagram. But uh, the, re the original result of Feynman is more general. He so maybe you start with some standard Lagrangian and you add some spin to particles with some terms? Uh, you, you already assume that you have spin, uh, spin to particles. You, you don't... In, uh, you don't uh, but you don't have a connection between curvature and uh, class in, at classical level, yes? So this is, you just start from Feynman diagrams as a, as a starting point. It is, uh, it is strange, but it is the original idea of uh, Feynman. But this theory fails. So that's why we make something with space-time, with flat space-time. We categorize uh, this uh, space-time and uh, again implement the Feynman program on such space-time. Maybe it, maybe it is not, maybe it is not, but Feynman show it is gravity. Sorry. Uh, so what we are doing? We are using uh, tools of synthetic differential geometry, uh, uh, which means we work uh, in a smooth topos, uh, which is a model of uh, synthetic differential geometry, uh, and uh, represent also a category of uh, smooth manifolds and smooth maps between them. Uh, and uh, this uh, category of manifolds must be fully and faithfully embedded into our model of synthetic differential geometry. And uh, in particular, uh, what Michał already explained in his talk, uh, uh, we obtain uh, real numbers which uh, um, synthetically, not classically, uh, contain uh, some objects of uh, infinitesimals, uh, 
which uh, in the internal language uh, of the category you can express that you have non-zero d uh, up to k plus one uh, power you get zero. Um, And our definition of uh, our rough definition of categorical space-time in this in this context is the following: uh, it is uh, ordinary uh, manifold uh, embedded already uh, Minkowski manifold embedded in in our category in our topos, um, and uh, for uh, uh, and to, uh, we we require that for any. Uh, local uh, cover of such manifold, we obtain uh, more fine uh, subcover uh, whose uh, uh, oh, whose uh, elements uh, are uh, um, isomorphic to the internal objects uh, R4 in the category. Uh, uh, I, I uh, said wrong that uh, uh, we start not from the uh, space time embedded in T, we start uh, with space time which is in set. Then uh, we require that for any uh, cover uh, we get sub cover that at some sufficiently uh, small level we get uh, mm, sub, uh, we, we get uh, neighborhoods which are isomorphic to the internal. Uh, objects in the topos. So um, we start from set, then we get, uh, uh, then we continue in the internal means of uh, of, of the topos. Now at uh, we say at micro uh, macro scale, mi micro scale, uh, which uh, physically means that in sufficiently high energies or small distances we get uh, reasoning which becomes into ionistic. Uh, or fields are propagating in the top of T. It is maybe not so very clear at that point, but let me explain. Uh, uh, from the internal point of view of, uh, of the topos uh, which we are using here, uh, uh, there are monads. Uh, monads are parameterized by uh, infinitesimal objects, dk, uh, which we know are uh, characterized by, by such elements uh, whose uh, k plus one power is zero. Uh, of course, uh, let me repeat that uh, in set there are no such d which are not zero and giving zero by k plus one power. Uh, so the intu intuitionism uh, and topoi are essential uh, here. And my main question uh, uh, asking here, uh, is the following, that given monads in, in space-time, uh, does gravitational field uh, know about the presence of monads? Uh, or in other words, uh, H-mini field, which is li linearization of a uh, metric tensor, ma metric field, propagate on monads. What, what does it mean? The answer is the following, that the only field propagating on monads is uh, H-mini uh, and it is the uh, only field sensitive uh, uh, of the presence of uh, uh, monads at our uh, categorized space-time. Uh, that means that uh, quantum gravitational interaction take place on monads uh, and uh, uh, there is discrepancy between uh, classical gravity, which uh, propagates on uh, space-time manifold, which is defined entirely in set, uh, but, uh, and uh, quantum gravitational interaction, which uh, uh, are described on monads, which require internal language of uh, uh, special toposes. And uh, such discrepancy probably uh, gives rise uh, to some problems with quantizing of gravity. Okay, how to describe uh, H mini on monads? Uh, in the synthetic differential geometry, uh, we have very suitable uh, presentation of, uh, uh, of uh, object DK, uh, which are given by spectra of uh, Weyl algebra. Uh, 
I don't, don't want to, uh, to go very deeply to, to this concept here, but uh, we can, uh, we can uh, imagine our Y algebra as, uh, as a such uh, uh, power series uh, in, with real coefficients uh, where um, in, in this uh, in epsilon uh, variable. Uh, there are uh, finitely, finitely many uh, terms uh, present here. Uh, so there is R and uh, K, K, K many these uh, epsilon terms. Uh, and the real spectrum is just this tail. Uh, and we can, uh, we can say that uh, the object DK uh, is uh, re represented in set by this uh, spectrum of a Weyler algebra. So, so we don't need, at that point, we don't need the uh, uh, internal language of uh, topoi. We just have presentation of uh, our infinitesimal object uh, by the spectrum of Weyler algebra, which is described entirely in set. Uh, that's why Uh, repeat, please. This spectrum is just an ordinary space. Mm -hmm. What space? Ordinary space, in the sense of what you write down. Or is it not? Because that yes. is commutative. Yes. Commutative. I'm saying that, that uh, we don't need uh, ah. topoi here. We just uh, can work uh, in representation in set. Yes, I agree. Uh, Okay, but when we when we uh, when we would like to have uh, interpretation of this uh, object in set as an infinitesimal real numbers, we need uh, topoi. We need uh, intuitionistic model. In set, uh, elements of this are some series power series, but uh, in topos uh, and this power series, of course, are not uh, real numbers in set. Uh, but in topos, this uh, power series becomes infinitesimals, which are uh, real numbers. So, uh, the, to this uh, interpretation, we need uh, topoi and intuitionism. Okay, and uh, next, uh, our move is the following. Uh, if we uh, want uh, that gravity interacts uh, at monads uh, somehow, uh, we should uh, interpret uh, at uh, monads, uh, for example, Newton constant, uh, which, uh, uh, which is related with uh, interactions. Uh, also, uh, is present in Feynman diagrams calculation. And uh, so our procedure is, is, is the following: we mm, uh, we interpret, uh, oh, sorry, we interpret the coupling constant, which is of uh, gravitational coupling constant which is uh, square root of 8 pi uh, g, g is uh, Newton constant, uh, we replace this by such expression, 8 pg square root multiplied by epsilon, which is dual uh, number in terms of uh, spectra of uh, Weyl algebra. And uh, such interpretation gives us some expression on, on the monads, on, uh, which is represented in this, uh, in this object. And, uh, but this uh, uh, such uh, expression has property that third power of this uh, vanishes. And this is main feature which uh, we use uh, when we say that uh, gravitational interaction take place on monads. This is, uh, uh, we could say, the only thing which survives, uh, uh, which is sensitive on the presence of, of monads uh, in space-time. And let, let me show how it works. Uh, okay, this is my purpose. And uh, we have uh, some examples. We have uh, two particles interacting uh, gravitational bar by uh, virtual uh, graviton. Uh, and uh, the expression we, uh, which we calculate uh, from such a diagram uh, is the following. Uh, here we have uh, uh, mo momentum energy tensors 
of particles and here is the propagator of, uh, of the uh, graviton and uh, here is uh, F square so on monads it means that um, there must be present uh, a dual number to the power of 2 and uh, and uh, when we uh, when we uh, Fourier transform that expression and uh, choose Mandelstam coordinates, which is uh, more or less uh, standard uh, procedure, and we take non-relativistic limit, we get uh, uh, we recover here uh, uh, Newton law of gravity, and with some correction, uh, we say quantum correction. But uh, it, this is the the way how the uh, classical gravity in non-relativistic limit can emerge from uh, diagram language. And uh, Feynman showed that uh, in fact not only uh, classical limit of, G, uh, of GR is uh, obtained here uh, like that, but we can get full GR in that way. It is quite interesting result. Uh, okay, so we see that uh, when we introduce another, yes? Whole GR. I, I saw uh, not very recently that uh, I also didn't believe. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you get the linearization, you can always ask the question uh, which uh, of what theory this lineariz linearization is. And you can. Um, recover uniquely GR, even from that uh, from that stage of. If you get linearization, you can ask what uh, linearization you get. But this is the second step, but just from the diagram. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure right now whether uh, whether uh, directly from diagram you get linearization or full. But but I was surprised it is full. But uh, I cannot uh, tell you the argumentation. Uh, right now. Okay, we introduce another vertex, uh, another two vertex in fact. Uh, we get uh, one loop uh, diagram, Feynman diagram, but according to our procedure, uh, the expression calculated from such diagram must vanish uh, because we have four vertices. Each vertex, uh, vertex gives us uh, the uh, Mm, expression proportional to coupling constants. We get uh, four power of coupling constant, which means uh, e to the power four, which is zero. And uh, so, maximally one loop gravitational di diagrams can survive this procedure. Uh, so, su supposing that in, in gravitational quantum gravitational interaction take place on uh, monads. Uh, only one loop gravitational diagram survived this procedure. This is simply conclusion of that what we are doing here. Uh, but we know that uh, ordinary uh, pure quantum gravity uh, is uh, finite in one loop and uh, uh, with sources is renormalized. So we expect that our theory uh, can lead to the renormalizable uh, quantum gravity. This procedure, this uh, in, uh, including monads uh, to the picture, gives rise to the uh, probably. I didn't prove this yet, but uh, we are working on that here. Probably can give us renormalized quantum gravity. At first look, it, it uh, seems it is trivial, but uh, it is not trivial. The proof of that fact because. Uh, we get subset of one loop uh, diagrams, not, not full one loop diagram. If we get uh, full space of one loop diagrams, we get uh, for sure renormalized theory, but we have subset. So it is a very, uh, very fine uh, tuning between diagrams can take place. Okay, uh, the question is uh, now the following. Even this, even such theory is uh, 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 renormalized. Where is uh, classical gravity in the sense of curvature? Uh,
Large rule out uh, such a classical uh, curvature gravity interrelation uh, in our picture. It, uh, it appears that not. Uh, uh, we can, uh, I have to be faster maybe, uh, uh, we can recover uh, the curvature but in very non-trivial way. I mean, uh, uh, in incompatibility of the real line in set and the real line in topos, which is intuitionistic object, uh, enforces us uh, that so, uh, this manifold, when we require they are, uh, they are categorical manifold in the sense of, of definition which I gave before, uh, this manifold, ma uh, and we additionally require smoothness of such objects, uh, so, first thing is categorical manifolds, second thing we want to be smooth, uh, represented smoothly in set. Uh, this manifold must be exotic. So, any such manifold uh, representing uh, these two hour requirements, um, uh, can, it can be smooth, but it, ca it has to be exotic smooth. It cannot be diffeomorphic to the standard version of such manifolds. It, <coughs> The proof is uh, not very uh, simple, but uh, is based on, uh, on uh, uh, abstraction theory in <coughs> higher, higher dimensions. And uh, the only possibility uh, is the four-dimensional uh, exotic manifolds. Uh, but we know uh, from general uh, mm, setup of uh, smooth manifolds that there are also exotic manifolds, uh, for example, S7 cross R. Uh, uh, S7, we are taking uh, exotic uh, Milner spheres, <coughs> we can get exotic uh, eight-dimensional manifolds, also S11 and many, many others. Uh, so why, why we uh, exclusively state that uh, only S3, uh, S3 multiple R uh, can work here, or R3 multiple R? which is exotic R4, because uh, this exotic smoothness uh, on uh, such uh, higher dimension manifolds um, respects global smooth product. This product can be globally smooth. Only in dimension four, this product cannot be globally smooth. This is the only case. So the, the smoothness uh, in four dimension uh, uh, fits well with uh, our incompatibility of uh, real line synthetic and uh, real line in set. And because of that, uh, and because of this special uh, property of uh, uh, smooth manifolds, we get uh, the only possibility is four dimensional. And uh, uh, in particular case when uh, uh, M M3 multiple R, M3 can be taken as uh, R3, we get uh, R3 cross R, which is, uh, which is exotic R4. And uh, such exotic R4, what uh, also Christoph thought, cannot be flat, uh, is smooth manifold, but uh, it cannot be flat. And uh, this uh, curvature has physical meaning. And uh, recently uh, um, it was possible to show that uh, this, uh, this, curvature, uh, this curvature represents a cosmological constant. This is quite non-trivial result. Uh, so this is the way how to uh, curvature uh, and uh, general relativity uh, in this uh, sense uh, which require curvature comes back uh, to, the uh, to the picture. And uh, so category theory indeed uh, uh, allows us to uh, formulate uh, a kind of a theory which uh, has a chance to be uh, renormalized uh, and uh, the curvature uh, comes back to the picture uh, uh, by the presence of exotic R4 which cannot be flat. And this is the biggest uh, uh, probably the one of the biggest uh, mysteries in physics, how to obtain this uh, real physical value of this uh, cosmological constant density energy. And uh, uh, one, one proposition is the following, that uh, such realistic value can be obtained from uh, curvature of exotic R4. <coughs>
Thank you very much, that's all.